This is gonna be a good video, I promise you, but this is a reflection of how it's going to turn out. That's a freaking snake in the back of my boat. What are you doing, dude? Swimsuit girl, you wanna grab this thing? Yeah. No. I love handling snakes. See if he hits my... Oh, he's pissed. That right there. Welcome to Mighty Balls Fishing, guys. Everybody say hi to Bog. Bog is life jacketed up because there is a lot of current and we want a safe bog. We're all about bog safety. A lot of you guys who are beginning fishing will be like, I need this bait to do this or this. And it's kind of a, a one factor equation. And a lot of the hashtag pros will tell you, you need this one thing to do this, such as Ned rigs, which is what we're going to talk about today. And Maury said that was a lie. So don't, don't get into all that. To get started, yeah. But what you're going to find as you get more and more into fishing is little nuances make a difference. And I'm here to tell you that there is not one Ned rig that, that will oh, fish. Fish All right, so we got to get through this quick. There is not one Ned rig that will get you through every situation that that you approach. The hashtag pros will try to tell you this brand and the no, dude, it's that's crap. And if you want that kind of content, go watch their videos because that's not what I do here. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna break down. I use two Ned rigs, so maybe maybe I'm hashtag pro and Maury said it was a lie, but I use two. But there's a strict kind of. I don't know, like definition that goes into the two. And we'll get into that as we go through the video. But really those two will cover me from everything from like ultra finesse fishing and open water fishing all the way up to, you can see actually there's some trees and some cover. And that's really what you find in spring. These, these bass use staging areas, they use stopping areas, they use cover to kind of move up into the really shallow water and spawn because that's their, their end game. So we're gonna go through what kind of finesse techniques you can do with a Ned Rig, which two I think you need that will cover X, Y, and Z situations, why you need them, and hopefully we'll catch some bass. What do you say, Bog? Bog is already sleeping. That means I need to catch some bass. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go. Hey, wanna go fishing? Let's go. This really is the perfect like scenario representation of what I was talking about of having two set up. So we literally about like 50 yards back, you can see there's some tree falls and this rock gets a little craggly and I noticed some brush on the graph. We switched over to the, the power net, which has a little thicker hook, a little thicker brush guard because I wanted to pitch around that. And note too, I'm still doing this with like a spinning rod and eight pound test. I just want to get into heavier cover. This is like one of I don't know, like four or five creeks in this section of the lake. So it gets a lot of pressure. Like there's a the bog is freaking out because he knows the fish is in the live well. But I want to make a different presentation because I can I can even put that, that power net on a bait caster. That's something I don't think I mentioned. Like I can pitch wood and pitch into thicker stuff. But I want to get this fish released because she was headed back there to do something. But dude, that's a nice, nice four pound large man. <laughs> I love the like that is awesome. All right, let's get her back. Let's get you back where you belong. All right, see you later. Dude, it's so broad. They're such beautiful fish here. They're so broad and they get so fat in the spring when they're coming back to do their thing. But that's kind of an illustration of why I have the two set up. You know, I get into some more open water, some more open kind of bluffs and that, and I'll go to that that Clint Davis. I get into some thicker tree falls, or if I know it's a little craggly on the bottom. I'll go to that power net and it just keeps me from getting hung up. It does take a minute. We talk about efficiency a lot. It takes a minute to switch back and forth, but in the end, you're not hanging up that net. And any of you guys who already throw it know how much it'll hang up, especially in wood and in those little rock crevices. So that little, you know, 10 second switch, it's really not taking up that much time from an efficiency standpoint. I won't catch another. That was, <laughs> that joker just come and went, whoa, whoa, whoa. I like that. So what are the main like, terminal tackle differences between these two you know it, it's pretty simple um, on the nickel side this is the nickels clint davis so it has a smaller hook 
a little lighter brush guard, and the keeper is a little bit different. It's just your wire form style keeper. On the, the power Ned, there's a stiffer, more stout brush guard, a bigger hook, and then you have your screw lock keeper. And we've talked about it a little bit in the videos, but what really kind of differentiates it is when it comes to cover. If you're fishing around wood or some kind of like dock or something along those lines, skipping is a great example if you're skipping oftentimes with the clint davis with this guy your, your soft plastic like this is an ace will actually slip down and it, and it gets a little kind of frustrating and it, and it makes you a little less efficient on this guy you have that stouter hook because oftentimes with docks you know it's a little thicker cover you have posts and things along those lines and it has that that screw lock so i can pull on this thing and when it's skipping there's pressure put against the the worm the soft plastic part it won't slip down on the other hand, if you're fishing like smallmouth, kind of like we talked about, spotted bass, you know, that smaller hook, oftentimes they'll, they'll bite it and spit it out, bite it and spit it out, especially in situations where you're dealing with current. So that little smaller hook gives you a little bit of, we talked about it before, like an insurance policy where it's a lot easier to hook up, especially with that little spinning rod. Now, when coming back to the, the power net, What's nice with this guy, I will rarely put the Clint Davis. I'll put the JT Magnet on bait casting gear, like a seven foot medium or seven foot medium um, Halo TI, and I'll throw it on the ledges in like a quarter ounce or in a little bit heavier versions. But if I have stuff that's not just shell, if there's brush around, that's where this guy comes in handy. I won't use the eighth on bait casting gear, but like the quarter and the three eighths, I can throw that around cover. Whether I'm pitching it to like a tree fall, I can put it on bait casting gear or even braid. One of the reasons we actually developed this guy on the gambler end is to pitch around lily pads uh, down in Florida for isolated pads for like spawning fish, um, isolated stalks and that. So you can put this on a little stouter gear. I wouldn't go any heavier than say like 40 pound braid or 20 pound fluorocarbon. And even when you hook a fish, you got to keep in mind, it's still like a three yacht hook. So you can't go crazy like putting the bend on them. You want to use like a medium heavy style rod, but it allows you to fish deeper stuff on bait casting gear with heavier tackle so if you got bigger fish or thicker stuff with bait casting tackle um more cover oriented situations and that's the biggest difference because in the end like i want to throw that net in open water on structure and i want to throw it on cover because they don't see it that much and that kind of covers me for both situations like from more finesse to finesse into cover into the thicker stuff I really hope that's a bass. Because if it is, it's a big one. It's my three pounder. Come here. Gotcha. Dude, she cranked it. Like, absolutely cranked it. Yeah, it's two and a half, but look how fat she is. Stay on there. That's a big. That is a big. Come here. Catch. <laughs> I got out the, the the power net, dude. And uh, we got. Let me look at this. <laughs> that was awesome. She fungal dunked it, dude. This is kind of cool because we're on a bit of an adventure. I've never been this far back in this creek and it, it gets like super skinny and I don't know. It's just super cool, but it's a great example here. We got this giant tree. Do you see that shade spot like right back in there? I basically just skipped my Ned. We're still kind of focused on these bluff walls, but I skipped that power Ned because it's, you know, a little more tangly. And oftentimes there's a lot of limbs you don't see underwater when you have these tree falls like this. I skipped that joker back there, dude, and there was no doubt I lifted and friggin' it was on. I got to play with my drag, though. It was a little bit loose, but that's a solid one. Let's let her go. Bog, is there a fish in the live well, Bog? Yeah. <laughs> Bog's like, bro, you got a big one in the live well. <laughs> go do your thing and make more that look like you because you are awesome. Isn't that water cool? 
kind of interesting too you know you would think the further you push back in these creeks the dirtier the water will get it's actually gotten a lot cleaner and that actually makes that net perform there's still a bit of stains when i'm putting that chartreuse on the tail but that was freaking cool dude and that is such a versatile bait it's so cool and in spring you cannot beat it so this is a really good illustration and it, what one of my goals here is to define when you use what you know at least my opinion of it you guys might have a different opinion but especially in alabama i run into a lot of different situations where fish are shallow using cover but they're offshore as well you can catch them out deep 10 12 20 30 feet of water and they provide different scenarios so you really that's where it comes down to that nuance you need to adjust your presentation so we're fishing this is kind of an obvious spring deal you know we're in a creek we're kind of fishing the, the wall we fish the bluff wall back there on the way back but you can see immediately there's these giant tree falls but then you can see it kind of like opens up down over here so this is what I'm talking about where you want a different presentation for each so I'll use that that power net to, to kind of flip around some of this and toss around some of this heavier wood and then I'll turn to that Nichols Clint Davis for some of that more open water stuff or if I'm like structure fishing maybe I see on my graph here actually we're getting super shallow but maybe I see on my graph there's like a little rock pile or something down deep I'll get out that Clint Davis and kind of structure fish it if I see that there's brush down there I'll get out that power net so it's kind of it's mainly I guess focused on on what kind of cover you have in front of you and also what kind of fish what kind of caliber even type of fish that Clint Davis has a little bit smaller hook on it so I like to use that when I know smallmouth are in play or spotted bass because they have a little bit smaller mouths their mouths are usually a little bit harder um, so that smaller hook allows me to hook up a little bit easier and oftentimes too I don't know what your experience is but spotted bass and smallmouth will they'll, they'll like peck at or they'll grab the bait and they'll drop it super quick so having a little smaller hook makes it I guess a little easier to hook up and and get that hook in there because they drop it especially in current situations but that that power Ned it has a little bit stouter hook um, a little bit stouter brush guard so I can put it into these trees if I know I'm dealing with like bigger bass on ledges say I'm gonna go fish pickwick and fish ledges dude I got a shot at catching like a seven eight pounder I don't want like a little tiny baby hook on there because things are scary enough as is in my life so I want I want a little bit of assuredness so a little bit stouter hook if I'm in Florida I'll run the power net unless it's an open water situation maybe I'm fishing a shell bar then my, I might go down to that that JT Kenny mag Ned because I, I don't need the brush guard and I just want that open hook and they grab it super light these are the things you got to play out in your head and that's why I kind of have the the two different ones because I feel for all the situations that I run into those two will cover me across the board I also have a ton of confidence in them I've used them a whole bunch um, they I know they get bit I still don't know why a Ned get, gets bit and I know there's gonna be comments on this video that are like bro it's an improved shaky head we've been doing this for years okay cool like no need to to be a dick about it like it is what it is all I know is that it works and I can literally get bites where guys throwing a Texas rig do not and th that's literally all I care about so troll your comments do whatever you want to do. I, I don't care but those two cover me for pretty much any situation I'm going to run into. And I really feel like fishing in North Alabama, I run into a lot of the situations that you guys run into. You know, rocks, tree falls, open flats like this, grass. It, it, it's all there. And those two Neds have really kind of played into my wheelhouse and allowed me to fish pretty much whatever's in front of me. Another one off the bridge. Oh dear, that's a big one. Dude, just freak it. I saw my line running and this joker had it the whole time. <laughs> Heading back to spawn, Mark. And you actually, you can see, JT taught me this. When you, their eyes start getting red like that, they're totally, fuck, stop. She wasn't coming off either. That's the nickels, because we're really basically fishing open water stuff but when their eyes get super red like that head back to spawn let's let her go back down we're getting some bites and they're actually coming if you see that pipe right there they're coming from right behind that pipe i think what's actually happening is there's current flushing through here it's not like a ton but it's flushing through here and there's must be some little underwater eddy and when you take that ned and just kind of let it 
flow through it, they go and knock it. But what's interesting about this, and it's kind of the emphasis of the whole video, sorry about the cars, we're right next to the bridge, obviously, and it's getting a ton of traffic. But the versatility of the net, we've been throwing it to bluff walls, been throwing it to like like that tree fall back there is where we caught that, that four pounder. Like, you can literally put it anywhere, but that's why you need a little bit of nuance and a little bit of diversity in the in the presentation and in the way you rig it up so that you can fish it around all these things because they bite it. It Bog's trying to, it's starting to get warm, so Bog's crawling into the, the console back there. But it's so versatile and it gets bites, especially in spring, there's something about it where they just chew it. But I, I'm gonna cast back in here because there's more. That's a big. Oh yeah. We gotta run this this giant bridge, <laughs> and and uh, I'm like, gosh, there should be a fish here. There usually are fishes on bridges. Don't come on. It's a nice three and a half pound. <laughs> that was so cool. But bug, you gotta stop doing that. Fish really don't like that. But that's a great example of um, bug. Stop. Uh, using that that little like I barely felt her there dude that's a that's a chunky one but we just flipped it around these these dock pilings or, or these bridge pilings and I'm like dude there's got to be a fish here they're flushing back it makes sense and just lift it and that's the beauty of the Ned too like you really don't have to set the hook that hard so the bites are subtle but the hook sets subtle so it balances itself out so how do you fish this Ned rig well I kind of like to just kind of slang it around a little bit you can see we're trying to uh, fish a few docks right here but the biggest key is, is you cannot go too slow. You might actually fling it around and like toss it kind of fast and cover a lot of targets. But when you're actually fishing, you can see my rod's kind of out to the side. I'm just kind of pulling it. So whatever it's on, it just kind of gradually kind of drags off. And then once I think I'm out of the strike zone, I'll bring it on in. And then the other thing I like to do is skip it. So boom, right up onto the docks. But the same deal, you can never go too slow. And the bites are either gonna be, you're either gonna get a tick, which is a lot of fun, but for the most part, especially the bigger ones, it's just kind of dead weight. Like you, you just reel down and you think you might be hung and then your rod tip starts kind of bucking a little bit. That kind of felt good for a second. But just take your time with it and fish it slow. If you're doing it, there, there's a couple reasons. If you're fishing the net, it's because you're in a high pressured situation or there's, you know, the fish are in a funky mood. So you, you wanna fish slow. Both of those call for, for slowing down. Stay out of there. And that's why you slow down. <laughs> I got just as much eelgrass as bass. Uh, this was the, um, the, the power net because we are skipping the docks and want a little heavier net, but there we go. But you get the idea. So that's how you fish a net. Talk about like proof of concept, right? <laughs> All good things must come to an end. I really wanted to get into more skipping docks like these with you guys, but I had a little problem. I spun a hub on my Merc and I'm like eight miles from the boat ramp and kind of stuck. So we're gonna have to wrap up this video because I'm gonna be trolling for a long time. Don't get Maury Povich'd and don't spin a hub because then you'll sit at a boat ramp for an hour while you wait for somebody to pick you up. Not the way I want at the end of the day and you especially never want to leave them like biting and that's frustrating but what we'll do is we'll get back out here and I want to walk you guys through skipping a Ned because it's a whole nother dimension to this Ned rig fishing and especially in spring it can be hugely rewarding. Bog can I can I get these Neds? So these are my two go-to Neds. Uh, the Clint Davis or the JT Mag Ned by Nichols or the Gambler Power Ned that guy right there. And as we talked about in the beginning of the video, fishing is a lot about nuance, especially as you get more and more into it, if you're just starting off or as a beginner or a novice. But it's really little things that make a big difference. It's not so much doing a completely different technique, but taking a technique and applying it to where you're at, the cover you're at, the, the situation that you're at. And what I find with Ned Rig fishing is I try to simplify, but I need something that'll cover me in all situations. So pretty much just to give the basic rundown and recap, the power net 
little thicker hook, little thicker brush guard, and you have that screw lock. It's perfect for heavier cover situations, say you're fishing wood, kind of like what we did today. Um, I'll do the skipping docks at some point, but with skipping docks, that screw lock keeps the bait from slipping down. So you get a lot less, you burn through a lot less baits, and you're more efficient skipping docks and like fishing through. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've changed baits when there's just like a little wire keeper or something, and I'm skipping, skipping. But heavier cover, just wherever it's thicker, or if you're dealing with bigger fish, the original concept behind it was to have something that was a little stouter that you could maybe put on 40 pound braid or use with a bait caster for like isolated pads, isolated stalks and targets. So don't be afraid of using it on bigger fish or in thicker cover situations, even with bait casting tackle. That's what it was literally meant for. In this situation, I'm using a little lighter weight and I want kind of light line because I'm trying to be a little bit more finesse because these fish are, are moody and they're getting pressured. The other one that I got the the nickels the clint davis i will go with it has a smaller hook little lighter brush guard and there's no screw lock on there i'll go with this specific one when i'm targeting say spots um small mouth if i'm on mixed bag bodies of water like we are today or if the fish are just biting funny it's spring and i want something just super small where if i lift that rod that tip's just going to set the hook i'm running both of these on a halo ks2 610 medium uh, 14 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, pretty much finesse fishing. But I will go up to sometimes on open water, because this is what I'll use in pretty much open water as well. But if I want to put a little bigger bait on there, I'll go up to the JT Kenny Magnet. And once again, it's more of like, say I'm on like a shell bar or something, but I want a finesse approach, things along those lines. The JT Kenny Magnet, I also will put on bait casting gear, like a medium action bait caster with 12 pound fluorocarbon. It's great on the ledges like that, or for open water kind of hard spots and that. But really, those are the two neds I, I think you need that will cover you in almost any situation. Today, we fished anything from rock to wood. We even got to skip a couple docks right at the end of the day before I pulled that super smart move and uh, blew out my hub like an idiot, eight miles from the boat ramp. But I'm gonna have to live that one down today. But they'll cover you in almost any cover, any situation that you're gonna run in on, into on your lake, baits-wise, real quick. If you're gonna pick one, Pick your favorite stick bait. I like an ace. It's just a five inch ace and then I cut it down right around the worm sack. The other one that I'll use a whole bunch, basically my two standards are the ace and then a Domeki Stinger. Those pretty much cover me in almost any situation. You notice today I dipped the tails in chartreuse. Even though we're finesse fishing, the water does have a little color to it, so I wanted that bait to show up a little more. If you do have water that has some stain in it, every once in a while I'll go up to a burner craw or something just with a few flappers, but still like that cylindrical design, um, just to move a little bit more water so they can track it down and find it. But really, like anything else, you can put anything on the back of that thing. I'm not a big fan of the TRDs. I need to actually use them more and try them out more. Um, but anything that, that's kind of straight and streamlined can go on the back of the net, even if it's got little kickers and stuff. Like even like a BB Cricket or something like that. But straight, streamlined approaches and then very, whether you maybe dip the tail or you have little kicker legs depending on your water quality. Hey, Bog, you want to wrap this thing up? Well, we wait another hour. <laughs> Everybody throw a like and subscribe on this video for Mr. Bogster because he's being a trooper because we're going to have to sit here for a while. But I appreciate you guys watching. This is what real fishing looks like. It doesn't always work out great in the end, but at least we got some bites and that puts a grin on my face. Thank you guys. Your support makes these videos happen, but we'll catch you next time out on the water, hopefully with a prop that spins and pushes the boat. <laughs> But hey, it's fishing, right? Tight lines till then. Later.